Okay, there we go. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this. How you guys doing? I'm Ken Rose. I play guitar with rock band Hero Jr. You can check the band out on www.herojuniormusic.com. Um, I'm in Chicago today, so I've got my little travel rig with me, which is my Dual Terror and my PPC 112 and my little mini pedal board, which you can't see, but which I'll play later. Hope you guys are all doing awesome. Um, yeah, I'm playing my Les Paul. It's a custom shop reissue if I can get it in the screen. I'm on the Fat Channel. Can you guys hear me okay? And can you hear the guitar okay? Um, people said it sounded shitty last time. I mean, I checked it. I'm really sorry. Sometimes it sounds great. It always sounds great on my stuff. I think it depends on the internet connection and we're trying to figure out what's good and what's not good on the internet. I will be back in my studio next week and I'm going to try to figure out a way to go through the studio with all my gear. So anyway, here's the guitar. <laughs> All right, can you hear that? Is it coming through clear? Are you able to leave? comments let's see you can see mine okay so it should work we should be working um all right for those so you guys that are just coming in i'm ken rose i play guitar with the rock band hero jr i have been in the band for eight years now since um june of 2012 we've played over 850 shows across the country hey jesse okay cool everything's working um yeah i'm a rock dude i started playing guitar when i was 12 years old i've been a songwriter a producer i've worked for major labels i've worked for indie labels um it would be great if we could Get something going here where I can help you guys figure out if you're in a band, cool. If you're not in a band, how you could use your hobby of music or if you want to be a professional musician, uh, maybe I can give you guys some tips, some information about what can help you survive in the music business because it is, you know, it's kind of a weird business, especially now because we can't tour. I mean, we have done so many shows in our band and we have not been able to tour. So it's been pretty interesting trying to find, you know, different ways to do things and how to get the art out there. So if you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer any questions that you've got. And, um, that's cool. The, the, um, genre really, you know, there's a genre for everyone, metalcore, which, to be honest, it's not my thing, but I think that the quote rules or um, some of the some of the helpful things they they work across the board. So the most important thing I and these are just my opinion. So you know, if something inspires you, cool. If not, it's art. So we all have different experiences and we diff have different ways of doing stuff. I think loving what you're doing and being honest no matter what style of music you're doing is the most important thing. It's like, if you don't love what you're doing, why should someone else like it or want to buy it? That's, I think for me, that's, that's personal rule. Number one, it's like, I've made a lot of music that I didn't necessarily love, but what I did love was the creative process. And after a, a whole career of, you know, writing all kinds of different songs for different people, I ended up quitting all of that for the most part and joining a rock band playing the exact kind of music that I really love to create as a writer, as a producer, and as a musician. So I think loving what you do is really important. 
And I think after that, I would say the next thing that's important is not being afraid to fail because we got to learn and you don't just become a great band. It takes so much experimentation, failure, you know, trying different things. It's like, it's stuff that you learn over years. It's not stuff that you're going to learn in a second. And most of the time, if you end up and you've got that real kind of luck where you get success right at the beginning, most people can't hold that success. And it's not because of talent. It's just because of there's a lot of different things to experience when you're being creative. So that's that's just the basic thing. And we can get into that more. I'm going to try to give some online lectures. I've, I'm used to doing that in front of people. I did it in England a lot when I lived in London. And I, I did a lot of lecture tours in Europe. And it's really awesome to be able to exchange ideas with you guys that are either just starting playing music or you need some tips or you're trying to figure out how to make records without a budget, how to write better songs. I mean, there's so many elements that it takes to, you know, have a career and it's not just one or the other. It's, you know, having a, having a balanced arsenal of things at your fingertips that just kind of fall together over the years of working. So any questions you can ask, I'll try to answer them. My name for those of you guys that are just tuning in, is Ken Rose. I play guitar in a rock band called Hero Junior. I also play a lot of guitar sessions. I write songs for other people. I produce and mix records for people. But my main gig right now is being in a rock band, which is what I always wanted to do. And now I'm doing it. So, And I've been working with Orange for eight years. It's been a real organic relationship that I've had with Orange right when I was leaving London to move to America, they told me that if I was playing their gear, I would like it a lot better than my vintage Marshall stuff. And it's really true. I have been using the same OR50 live on tour for over 850 shows without a problem. I love that amp. Um, I love this amp, the Dual Terror. I don't really use that live, but I use it in the studio a lot. I use an RV. Um, 50 Mark III in the studio a lot, and Orange stuff really is cool, and I'm not just saying that because these products that I couldn't use as tools. So anyway, so today I'm playing um, Yes, we are. Uh, end up on vinyl. I mean, it's kind of weird right now because usually we tour a lot and we record, and now that we're all allowed to be in the same room together, we're just recording everything live and if you want to hear the first song that we released as a single you can go to www.herojuniormusic.com and deep end price tag that's the result of the first song we're doing it in the living room totally live no overdubs rock and roll it's been really fun and the whole album's going to be like that and i'm sure that we're going to release it on vinyl i know we're shooting for an album release to coincide with the concert hopefully in October, which we will be able to announce as soon as everything is locked down. Um, it'll be all virtual when we do it, but it's going to be really fun. And so, yeah, we, we should have that vinyl out as soon as we can. That last record is on vinyl. And, um, yeah, you can – turntables, man. Yes, the designer turntables, some of them are really good, but – I bought my girlfriend a turntable for under $100 for Christmas last year, and it also kicks ass. So vinyl just sounds awesome. Anyway, I am Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Jr. Today I'm on the road with my little portable rig. I've got a dual tear. And, um, yeah, I'll put it on the clean channel for a sec. I, I really love this amp. It's small. <laughs> Sounds great, clean, takes effects really good. I'm going to put the JHS Bender on. This has been one of my new favorite pedals, especially if I'm doing sessions. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
And yeah, for me, Orange and Gibson, it's the killer combination. For those of you just tuning in, my name is Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Jr. I've been in the band for eight years. You can check us out at Hero Jr. on Instagram. Hero Jr. official here on YouTube um, and www.herojuniormusic.com. If you want to find out who I am, you can do that after we're done here. Um, I'm using the vintage um, Celestians on here and in, in, in all all of my cabinets they're pretty much the same in my 212 they're 30s i think and in this one it's a i think this is a 60 the vintage celestian i really like them i just haven't needed to change so i i didn't haven't changed anything around i'm been playing guitar my whole life since i'm 11 years old but i'm really not very technical so there are a lot of people that know a lot more about technical things. I'm a feel oriented player. I've, you know, I've studied, I've unlearned what I've studied and I'm really into blues, the feel of rock, where, where rock came from in the, you know, from the original blues and, um, seventies, seven, sixties, seventies rock. I really like, I love grunge. I like any kind of music that's honest from the heart. Um, I wish I could. <laughs> yeah, I. Sorry, dude. I wish I could send everybody an amp to try, because tubes are great. But again, a lot of a lot of people ask about the modeling amps, and for me personally, they they serve a purpose. I just can't feel it in my hands. Like I need to have an amp with the speaker, and for some reason, I just have always grown up with tube amps and with a Les Paul and tubes, it works good. But I, I think, you know, anything, anything works. It's all about the playing and the feeling at the end of the day. You can, you know, in, in my opinion. So today I'm using a custom shop, Les Paul, um, with a uh, dual terror. I've got it on the clean channel. Oh, I this the other, um, We'll get into this after I'm done with Steve, who's coming up in a second. But you guys asked me to bring a getaway driver, so I've got that plugged in. So as soon as Steve and I are done talking, I can see his bearded face driving a car somewhere. Let's see what he's got to say. What's up? Hey, man. <laughs> How are you doing? Killer T-shirt. Thanks, dude. Are you on your lunch break? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. For you guys that don't know Steve, Steve Rose is one of the top rock photographers. He's shot everyone from Slash, Tom Petty, tons of great people. He's a great dude. And obviously, because of COVID, nobody's shooting pictures because nobody's playing shows. So he, Steve has started a website called Guitar Disorder, which is all about guitars and Steve actually knows way more about guitars and gear than I do. He's one of those guys that just knows shit. And, yeah, he's he's always out there looking for gear. Um, we're going to get a lot of stuff on the website. I've been doing some demos for him. And he's been doing some demos, and there's a lot of cool stuff coming. And Steve has earned the new nickname of Guitar Hunter. <laughs> How's it going, brother? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. I'm I'm safe. I'm in Chicago. They they haven't sent the National Guard or whatever they're sending out yet, but it's all okay. good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Tell me, how's the new guitar? It's good, man. Tell us what you got. I got a um a Les Paul Custom in Maduro Brown. And Maduro Brown is a color they only made in 2012. Um, that was back when Gibson was having issues getting rosewood, you know, fingerboards and having to use rich light instead of rosewood or going with ebony. Um, so it's a Les Paul Custom with a rosewood fingerboard, which is pretty rare. They made two different versions. They made one version 
that had gold hardware and 490 and 498 pickups and they had another version with nickel hardware for the VOS and it had 57 classics and that's what I have is the nickel version with the 57 classic pickups. Mm, how's it uh, sounding? It sounds good. You know what? I, I like the neck profile. It's my first Les Paul custom um, and it's it's a little smaller than my 59 but even the 59 feels small to me when I when I hold it. And that's why I don't I don't really play 60s. It's because those are really small feeling. Yeah. But um, I think 58. <laughs> that's why I do play 60s. Yeah, man. Those are, it's like, they're like little toothpicks, it feels like. Yeah. I know. You're you're a real man. That's why you're a guitar hunter. No, no. I'm just used to, like, my first thing, and that's what it was. <laughs> That's cool. What else is new? What other gear? You tried out a you tried out a fuzz box, uh, right? Yeah, analog man sunface. Verdict. Um, it's okay. You know, I don't. I'm just going through a bunch of different fuzzes and seeing what I like or what. Not that what I don't like, but much like you, what may not work for me. You know, not that there's anything wrong with the pedal. Yeah. But just for my apple. And just for my my ears, you know, what, what would work. Um, just like the way some people, you know, love strats and, and nothing else. I, I'm not a big fan of strats or, or a lot of fenders. So yeah, I hear you. I'm a Gibson guy through and through, so that's really all it is. If I, use, if I used a strat on the road with Hero Jr., I don't think I'd be able to play, but I use strats in the studio sometimes. And, and so, you know, a lot of... I think we're losing you a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, you know what? For me, it's the middle pickup. I can't, my hand, uh -oh. I can hear you just fine. Oh, dude, I we, we got a shit connection. Sorry, man. Hi, right, buddy. Hey, let, I'll I'll talk I'll talk a little bit about when you're home. We can do it again and show some of your pictures and everything. And check out Steve's photos. I I put his link there in the comments. And check out www.guitardisorder.com. It's gonna be a really cool website when it gets going. Steve is a Steve's just a really awesome music dude, and once what I'm sure he's taken photos of one of your favorite artists at one time or another. So check check out his his gallery online. His his slash photos are some of my favorite slash photos out there. So Steve Rose, the links there and guitardisorder.com. And speaking of fuzz. I can see that Mr. Fuzz is banging on the door. So let's welcome Blake from the top. Knock, knock. <laughs> knock, hey, knock. hey, how's it going, man? I'm doing good. Sweet. Me too. Yep. Nice shirt as well. Oh, well, today's... thank you. Oh, yeah. Matt, 1981 Invention. It's good stuff. Yeah, today's cool, today's cool shirt day. So for those of you guys that don't know, every week we're talking to Blake from the Tone Mob. He's got another fuzz for us and he's a real expert on all kind of effects pedals follow him online he's got some cool shit he's got a really cool podcast and yeah what'd you bring for us today dude man thanks for the intro ken you always make me sound much cooler than i am but uh well, you, you've got more <laughs> followers than i do <laughs> <laughs> people like to nerd out so yeah so well, let me get a little bit closer here we got the yellow cake pedals furry and fried pedal this week so this is a combination of two pedals ryan from yellow cake makes great stuff um his furry burrito is his fuzz this uh, whoops this side uh and it uh it's a very versatile fuzz it, it can really do like overdrive sounds real splatty stuff like really all over the board it's got gain drive and level and so by adjusting the, the gain and drive knobs, you can get a lot of different textures. And then it's got that filter on it. It's a really great circuit. And then the other one is his fried gold, which is his overdrive pedal. 
which is just a really great sounding simple box. And then you got a order switch here, right there, that you can flip between the two. So he sells these individually, or at least he used to, but the furry and fried puts them both in the same box and, you know, save you some space if you're a big fan of that circuit. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's good stuff. Really beautiful art. It's kind of hard to see, but it uh, looks really cool. It does look really cool. And it takes up. Yeah, that's. I'm going to write that one down too. The furry and fried. It's a. It's a lot of fun. Yellow cake makes great stuff. Ryan makes all kinds of things. Uh, he's been on the podcast like three times. He's a. He's a wacky and wonderful dude. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, you guys check check out the podcast. I'll put it in the comments. I think it's thetonemob.com, right? It's a tonemob.com, and you can find the podcast on any podcast player. It's if you search Tone Mob, it'll come up. It's there. And you can go listen to Ken's episode. Or Ken's episode. There we go. This guy. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a cool podcast. I've listened to quite a few of them. And what's cool is that Blake's got musicians on. He's got builders on. It's, it's just, you know, there's something for everyone. And there's always something to be learned. And there's very interesting information about pizza when you listen till the end. So when you grab a oh, podcast... Yes. Listen all the way till the end because that's just as good as the gear. Yeah, we're creeping up on uh, 200 episodes. I've noticed the, just last night. I was, I think I, I released episode 192 today. So, and all the episodes are at least an hour. So there's a lot of hours <laughs> to yeah, catch that, up on. That that's really cool. Yeah, I, get, I catch up on the episodes. Check them out. Always something interesting. And you guys, if there's a pedal that you want to know about coming from Blake. He's got a whole bunch of shit at his place. I've seen pictures. There's like a lot of shit there. Look at that. That's we got, like, we got stuff. So if you've got any questions about pedals, he's usually on every week for a little bit and we can talk about it. And if you want some reviews of pedals, I'm going to be getting a lot more pedals in to do some reviews too. So, yeah. Sweet. Pedals rule. Pedals even rule. Though, even though we've got this much room on the board, it, takes, <laughs> it does. It it takes a lot to get on the real the number one board. You can never have too many options, though. If you're a studio guy, though. Oh so. yeah, I've I've been I've been fooling around. I've been fooling around with the um. This week, I'm doing some reviews on the Earthquaker. The um, what was I using? The Rainbow Machine, I was a little bit less, which has absolutely no place with Hero Junior. But man, it's I've been doing some tracks to demo them, and it's also super cool. And um, what else? And then the other one, what's the the bigger one? The Rainbow Machine's the smaller one, and then there's the one that's just complete chaos. It's got everything on it. Uh oh, are you talking about the data corruptor? Yes. I haven't I haven't got to that one yet, but that's the next one. And I just plugged it in for a second. It's like, fuck yeah, this is really fun. <laughs> so, you make all kinds of noise with that thing. Well it's it's great because I'm starting to do some film and TV stuff, and so it's it's gonna be really fun to just jam on that and then cut it up and, and fool around. So I'm And gonna... I've always wanted to work on like uh, you know, a soundtrack or something for a TV show. I, I, I got so many, so many weird options back there. Like it would be so much fun to like work on a score, even though yeah, I am not it, that smart. Well, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's what, like we were talking about before. It's a lot of it is just the idea, you know, right. It's like, Ooh. and, and like for anyone listening, what I would suggest, if you want to do something, do it, like take, take a weekend and take all your pedals out and just do a five minute piece, do a two minute piece. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I think it's so great with like Netflix is a really good learning tool for what's current. There's, there is a trend in for, for, for mainstream. Of course, there's always going to be the total artsy side on one direction and then the total commercial direction side on the other, on right. the other side. But Netflix is a really good example of of solid. You need to have a lot of space if you're doing songs. The melody shouldn't just be bombastic because they want to cut your 
instrumentals together with melody if you're writing lyrics it should not be to it shouldn't really be a story about anything it should be ambiguous as possible but cool sounding and then if it's just instrumental i think again like we were talking about before do what you want do what makes you feel good and do two minutes i mean right just right. do two minutes and work, work your way through the dynamics of it and just do whatever makes you happy and i think that's the beginning of anything like you got so many pedals dude who knows what would happen and the other cool thing is we got youtube there's there's film students all over the world that if you have a two minute piece and put it on YouTube and look go online and look at film school and film students, mm -hmm. just put it out there. Here's here's my two minutes. Does anybody want to use this on a student film? Like that's where it can start. Oh yeah, that's a good and, idea. And, and I think like there's no good or bad when it comes to that shit. If if somebody thinks what you do suits their picture and they've got a good kind of direction it's gonna work i mean it's funny with all the like all the indie film stuff especially that i've done almost every bit of good music works to good picture right right like, totally it, it just it they go together somehow and and i mean when i was 16 years old i did some porn films where i didn't even <laughs> get film to look at it was like i would just get a list of cues Q1 shower scene Wawa <laughs> and, and like and how long it had to be and it's like it always works right and I never yeah, I should <laughs> yeah. I should send you some I uh, volunteered at a haunted house here like a year ago and they needed some some tracks for certain rooms and I made some really creepy stuff uh, and my son helped me with some of it and I should send them to you and let you check them out they were they were turned out yeah. really fun. Yeah, man. It's like what what I always try to talk about when I'm lecturing or, or giving a, a talk on creativity. It's like there really is no no wrong. Like if you're putting all of your love into what you do, there's going to be someone that likes it. And then you just have to develop your craft. It's, mm -hmm. it's really and having all those pedals. It's just fun. You know? Oh, yeah. The sky's so, the limit. Ha have you heard of Hudson Broadcast pedals? Yeah, oh yeah, the broadcast is fantastic. I don't have one, but I borrowed one for a little while. I need to pick one up. They sound awesome. Someone's asking about that. Someone's asking about a wah from a Heath kit. Wow, I didn't know you can even build your own wah. I mean, of course you can build your own wah. That's cool. Nocturne pedals. Nocturne? Oh yeah, Tavo's been on the podcast. He was a uh, he was on quite a while back and yeah, he makes great stuff. Tavo's awesome. What what pocket? You remember what number? I don't. It was like two years ago. So, okay. but if you Google Tavo Vega Tone Mob, you'll find it. Okay, Jay, you heard that right from the horse's mouth that he's on the podcast, and I will check that out too. And I will try to get some Nocturne pedals from our friends at Zounds and see what happens. So, hey, dude, I want to hear what you do though. So do it. All right. I'll send you send you some clips to check out. It's get, right. it gets freaky. <laughs> right on, Have a All good right. one. We'll talk Later. next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right, we're back. Um, yes, I will try to get some of those pedals and do a demo. Hudson Broadcast, Steve Rose, if you're listening, that sounds like a really cool pedal to get. Hudson Broadcast and nocturne pedals i've got here all right so let's talk about the pedal that i haven't had in my little portable pedal board now every time you asked about it and i don't even think i have it set up so hang on a sec let me check all right so this is the getaway driver it's also an orange pedal and what i like about this pedal i use this on sessions quite often um and this is a pedal that i have taken on tour with me because what's really not well known about it is it's got a headphone output and the headphone output is a lot like the old school amp simulators um 
oh man, I forget what the name of what the name of them was. They came out like, oh man, a lot of people use them. Anyway, it's got a headphone output that's a killer amp simulator, but I've got it set right now on about half gain. And here's my clean sound on the middle. I'll just use um, neck pickup. <laughs> clean sound and here's this pedal It's not really a fuzz, but it's got really good gain. It's definitely got more gain than like the vintage Ibanez kind of pedals. It's got good sustain. There's a really, it's got a um, bite, which is your tone knob, which is here. I've got it all the way off. <laughs> about half and then I got it full on So anyway, I like that pedal a lot, and you guys have been asking to hear it. So I'll keep this one on this little pedal board for a while so you guys could hear it. I see you, Billy. One sec. I got a question, and it's an OR question. Um, so without glasses, that looks like OR120. Yeah, I mean, fuck, oh, an OR120. That's... That's a great amp. Where's my fucking glasses? Oh, let's see what that says. Oh, CR120. Sorry. Um, CR120, I don't know. But right on hold is my mate, Billy. And Billy works at Zounds, which is a great music instrument company for online sales that I've been using for a long time. And let's see if he knows about the CR120. <laughs> so, you're, so you're gonna put me on the spot right away huh well i mean you're great no matter what so oh, and boy. you're a bass you're a bass player so you've got like a trump card i am a bass player so anything guitar player riffic just kind of goes straight over my head dude all right so no, 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 but, uh, but anyway the cr120 is is the crush guitar head yeah exactly yeah so uh, what's the question so he wanted to know if that's a good entry level amp, and oh, I. God think yes. It's loud entry level amp too, right? Yeah, do, yeah. I mean, it's everything that you'd ever want. I mean, if you're gonna get into it and you want, you kind of want that kind of lovely clean, you know, that solid state lovely clean, but you got that orange thing that's going on with it too. I mean, good lord. I mean, it's it's gonna be everything plus a lot more. Yeah, and I what what I think is, and I don't have a ton of experience with the Crush stuff, but I was using, I had a Crush thirty or thirty five in my studio in London, uh -huh. and I mean, there's a lot of people that didn't know that that was not a tube amp when I was playing it. So, oh, yeah, I I I would, yeah, I I you would have to be. You know, if you were to, to record it proper and, you know, just kind of A, B it between this and that, I mean, if, if you get good tones, man, I mean, it's just good tones. And the good part about it is, is that with the with, with the orange stuff is, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed they're 
you're going to get something that you'll love right out of it right away. So, yeah. So it's cool. Um, so yeah, that's a great one. I, I, I totally agree. And I mean, okay. So it's based on the rocker verb. That's what Jay says. And it just shows how much I know about gear, which is absolutely nothing, but I love my rocker verb. And that is my number one session amp. Like when I'm doing sessions for people. Yeah. And I just got some advice from a friend of mine about changing the tubes in my rocker verb to, to KT 88s in the power section. Yeah. And I'm going to learn how to bias my amp by myself. Excellent. So my hair might be well, great just... by the next time you see me. <laughs> be careful. Don't blow yourself up, man. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he says he can teach me over FaceTime. So, we're going to, we could do it live. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. I want in on that one. For sure. <laughs> so you, you, so you, what do you think about the orange bass stuff as a bass player? Cause that's a, I never haven't you played. Know what? Bass um, time. I suppose I should, uh, I suppose I should be careful, you know, being the Zounds guy and not say anything too, too brand specific. But if I was to take, that hat off and kind of go back on tour. Um, the orange bass stuff. I think the eighty two hundred, as far as like their big flagship amp, um, is one of the best voiced bass amps out there. Other than like a straight ahead old school SVT, um, I really enjoy that amplifier a lot. Um, and being close to the brand, what's cool is is over the past bunch of years. There's been a few different iterations of terror bass amps that have come out. Yeah. And the last one that came out, the little guy with the two 112 cabinets. Yeah. Dude, I, I I was really happy with how that sounded. And we we got that early. We did a video on it. Oops, sorry. And um and you know, we tried to our best to kind of make it sound terrible and we couldn't. And um it's usually what we try to do, um, of course. And um, so we played active bases, passive bases, whatever we could through it. And um, we were really impressed with how that front end, how that front end translates into just big, thuddy, yummy, punchy bass tones. And of course, it's got that grit to it. Orange's grit is legendary, especially um, with some of the pedals that they have to put that in front of it. Good God, it's 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 really yeah. nice. Yeah, that's I. I actually, I actually, um, yes, Anthony is the man, and we're gonna have him on here talking about tubes in the next couple weeks for sure, because we had a bum run last time. Um, I yeah. actually, I actually met Orange through the bass amp because in my studio in London, we we shared a studio with a band called the Magic Numbers, and they used orange base amps and i remember i almost bro broke my back carrying that fucker for <laughs> that has got to be the heaviest head in the history that's way heavier than the svt that oh dude the 200 is no joke man yeah i mean you can use it not only for great bass tone but you can use it as an anchor in your boat yeah but that's how i got hooked up with orange was through those guys because i i played the bass amp on some records that i was doing and they introduced me to Orange, and that's what led me to be here. Yeah. So what 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 kind of gear? So let's we can go away from amp, so there's no competition. But like, that's work, fine. Working at Zounds, you get all the shit first. What kind of pedals are interesting right now? Oof. Players. Man, um, there's a lot. Um, we do a lot. We're real close with. Uh, we're real close with brands like. Uh, Earthquaker, yeah, uh, we're real close with brands like Walrus. Um, we do a lot of stuff with Mike Matthews at Electro Harmonics. Um, we're real close with our buddies out in California at Dunlop and MXR and Way Huge, all those guys. So I mean, more of the kind of the blue chippy stuff we're doing really, really well with. But there are a few that have just come out. I mean, of course, DHS has got tons of mind share right now. Those four fuzzes that they just put out are absolutely legit. Holy moly. Um, our video, I know, I, I think you have one. Right here. Dude, 
Dude, I, that's, that's ridiculous. The bender, and, the, and, bend, the bender is is rad, and the crimson. I put that on my board instead yeah. of my vintage green Russian muff because I just didn't want to break it. And yeah. I've been I've been looking for four years to have a replacement for that on tour, and I think yeah, I remember. I think the crimson's gonna work. So if I've recorded with it. It's rad. Well, that's perfect, man. I mean, I mean, I mean that one that your your OG pedal is is valuable. So, I mean, and you got to have that confidence when you hit the stage too. So, I mean, that's cool. I mean, usually it's like, well, I can't ever find it, you know. And it's like, holy shit, you found. Oops, pardon me. And then uh, well, you can and, say you can say shit here. Okay, good. Um, so um, anyway, um, so that's, far, that I mean that's good um, that you. That you're actually confident with it. I mean, that that's just makes jumping on stage that much easier. So yeah, and it's just the little things, you know, it, the the little things about that pedal that work for me. Yeah, is that it runs over distortion. Their their pedals run like if I've got the amp just set on normal, just normal gain. I could put on the JHS. <laughs> I mean, bring it, man. It, Holy crap. It does just what the original does, though, because I've got a vintage tone bender, too. And mm -hmm. the, the great thing for me about orange amps is they actually take pedals really well. Yeah. A lot of amps don't take the vintage pedals well, especially on top of overdrive because they bought them out when you fuzz them up. Yeah. But, and, and that's... Both, I've played the Bender and the Crimson, and I've, I've talked about it a bunch, but they really do act like the originals. And for 175 bucks, I mean, that is a good price. Hell yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a really good price. Um, yeah, and and I, I don't think we've seen, you know, of course, we're, we're trying to be as clean to the marketplace as we can. And um, I don't think there's there's anyone out there. I don't think there's any negativity or anything weird kind of associated with this. Always with the product launchers can be people who are like, oh, good God, it's terrible, right? Um, but for the most part, with these, it's been nothing but praise. And everybody's like, oh, my God, I got to have them, you know? So, I mean, it's, that's super They are. They're fucking rad. And they've got the modern switch with the, where you can add the mids to it, which is just an, another cool thing to have. Yeah. Um, Blue chip wise, I mean, I gotta say that some some of the straight up MXR stuff, like I've been using um, the uh, Echoplex on my pedal board now for about I don't know three or four years, and that's I've got real Echoplexes, and again, I mean, for 199 bucks, and that's no advertisement for these guys, but I I've been using vintage Echoplexes, yeah, and to take this on stage. In a one unit, in one little pedal size with the tap tempo, I mean, it's really good. And that it's built like, it's built like hell, man. I've had I've had that, no problems on tour for four years. Another interesting pedal, like you were talking about, um, um, Earthquaker. So I'm totally not an Ibanez, um overdrive fan i mean i know that's like one of the holy grail pedals for a lot of people but uh -huh. for me i just never found that it had like enough grit for the way i played and through sure. and, my and through les paul but they um i just started doing a review on the plumes mm -hmm. and that seems to be like that's a great one it's based on that ibanez model right yeah but it's a little bit gnarlier mm -hmm. it's that's a great pedal. I mean, that's not going to be something that I can play in the band, but on sessions, that's great. Yeah, dude, that's – you kind of explained exactly. It's like there's – I mean, the 808 is what it is. I mean, you plug that into like a like an old-school 50-watt basement or something like that, and you have a Strat or a Tele or Paul or whatever it is, and it, you can kind of get that tone. I mean, it's like, all right, that's it, right? But – it's so subjective when it comes to playing style because I mean you you kind of play with the heavy hand a little bit, um, but at the same time it's smooth and it's 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 I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say I'm trying to explain how you play it's, um, where the, you can you can automatically know that you want a little bit more out of a fuzz pedal so so that totally makes sense 
Um, like there's other pedals, like the ODR, like the Nobles ODR One. I mean, that's another spin off of 808, which is another great pedal, which gives you a little bit, maybe a little bit more feel, a little bit more snarl, um, but controllable. But in, it, it, so there's so there's tons of stuff like that, um, which is cool. And there isn't a lot like you're right. There isn't a lot of shit. Like I think what's really cool about pedals now, and I mean, since I started doing some reviews and since I started doing more sessions again, since COVID started and I've got a, we're not touring. So I've been doing more sessions. Yeah. There's so much stuff out there now. And most of it is built really well. And I can just tell, even if it doesn't work for me, I always notice that this has something for other people. There, there's just a lot of really interesting stuff out there and not, it's not, too expensive i mean you've got your blue chip stuff and then you've got really high-end stuff yeah and they're all good it just depends uh, what you're looking for you know you're exactly right you know what i'm you know knowing you know that you're doing more reviews and stuff like that there's there's a company out there's a company that's out that we are doing business with that's kind of, it's not necessarily under the radar but maybe doesn't get as much notoriety as the big guys of course there's a there's a couple of pedals coming out from these from Jack and Audio, and um, that is definitely one to keep your whoever's watching. I mean, if if it, that those pedals are fantastic. There's an overdrive coming. There's a fuzz coming, um, and if you and if the folks out there, um, anybody is uh, tuning into stuff like the Landreth Brothers does or Joey Landreth, or there's a pedal that they do called the Golden Boy. Oh man, I mean, there it's it's super delicious. And what's cool about it, Ken, is what you just said is like, okay, you have a three knob eight oh eight or something like that. And, you know that it, it does what it does. The Jackson stuff takes it in in, in bakes it into something that's more controllable, more usable. Um, I, I, I you know take that for a grain of salt, more usable, or whatever. Um, but it just presents us with more options. And there are no compromises in tonal structure. It, they sound terrific, absolutely terrific. Like they're over-engineered. They're not over-expensive. Um, and those those are really, really good. And um, and we will have vids coming on those soon for, on Zounds too. Um, but but the Jackson audio stuff is really, really great. And in front is that of a Jackson, great Jackson, the guitar Jackson, or is that no, another? No, it's a completely different brand, oh. Jackson Audio. I'll, I'll, I'll check that out too. Hey man. You gotta run and yeah. finish this, but thanks and you're welcome anytime. And I mean, it sounds is great anyway because yeah, you know, thanks. You, I, you guys have everything and you've been good to the band. And I I just love that I can check stuff out and if I don't like it, I could send it back. And I've kept everything I've bought from you guys. So yeah, and um, you know what? And I th thank you and it, I love you. And of course, I love you, brother. And um, um you know, the, we can't wait for the band to come back out. I mean, this orange thing is great. I appreciate the opportunity to come in and spend some time with you and yeah. with the audience. It's really cool. Um, if anybody has, any, I don't, I don't want to necessarily plug Zounds, but let me plug Zounds. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty great place to shop. If in, if you know it, you know it. If you don't, go check it out. And, and the customer uh, service is fucking good. Yeah. Like, I could say fucking until the police come here in Chicago, like they're going to do next week. <laughs> Sweet. Well, you know, we're all a bunch of ass musicians that work here too. So um, that's no joke. And uh, we, we love it as much as everybody here tuning in loves it. So, um, right on. and um, right, dude. Dude, we'll talk yeah. to you soon. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in again next week. Yeah, man. Have a good one. All right. Later guys. Bye. All right, we're back. That was a lot of talking today, but these are all guys that are out there doing their thing, and I think it's really important because no one's traveling that you know we can all listen to what other people are thinking about pedals. I would really like to get into songwriting with you guys next week. So for any of you guys watching today that are writing songs, that want to learn how to write songs, that are in a band, like the key to your success as a band that has a singer or someone that wants to write songs is really having good songs. And I believe everybody could be a great songwriter. It's about letting go and being honest and developing your craft. So that's my two cents. And I would really love, you know, to talk more about,
about what I'm doing and how you guys could, you know, learn how to put yourself in positions where you can work as a musician because I've really been lucky. I've, I've been working professionally since I'm 16 years old and it's really awesome to have fun at my job every day. Right now and for the last eight years, if you just tuned in, I've been in a band called Hero Junior and it's totally my dream rock band. It's what I wanted to do since I was playing a tennis racket when I was 10 years old. So uh, my name is Ken Rose and I do play guitar in Hero Junior. You can check us out at Hero Junior on Instagram. That's Hero, J-R, all together, no period. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at my warped halo. I think all of the links are on the YouTube if I did it right. Um, I've been playing Orange for eight years today. I'm traveling. I got my travel rig, Dual Terror. Um, I'll put it on the. I love this amp for a little amp on a 112 speaker. I've recorded. I'm recording all my stuff on the road with it right now. I'm doing some sessions and it works great. <laughs> show pretty much so i had to play a little um what band made me play guitar oh shit i mean led zeppelin jimmy page has always been my main thing but it goes way back to the blues because i think that led zeppelin just took a twist on the blues and made it theirs and so i've i've always been a, a huge blues fan the three kings i mean listen to that shit um I mean, obviously, Robert Johnson. A any any vintage blues to me just has that thing. Um, and that's what got me into Les Paul Paul's. Sorry, I got a weird camera angle. But, yeah, I'm playing a custom shop 1960s reissue Les Paul. It's um, my new favorite guitar. I'm going to take it on the road next time as soon as we get out on the road, which is going to be really fun. And... I'm using that together with an orange OR50 and a Rocker Verb 50 Mark III. Those are the main um, amps I'm using. And then I use this when I'm just traveling. It's a, it's a great small amp. It sounds like a big amp. I don't know how it sounded through your computer today. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 
got to play a little bit today but I, I really like both both sides of this ample grade the clean side for vintage R&B stuff is super cool It's that time. Thanks, you guys, for hanging out. Hope the sound was better than it was last week. Um, next week, same time, same places on YouTube and Facebook at 4 o'clock Eastern time, 9 p.m. UK time. Um, I'm Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Jr. Check out the band. There's a lot of live things and cool information on um, Instagram at Hero Junior. And if you like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, some Hendrix, some Grunge, Soundgarden, it's really awesome to be in this band. And we've toured 850 shows in a little more than eight years. And yep, it sounds like it. So hope you guys enjoy the band. Hope you guys had a good time today. Thank you, Jay. Spread the word. Let's get more people here so we can have some interesting discussions about creativity, songwriting, production, being in a band, touring, whatever you guys want, a little bit of gear. And we will see you next week, same time. So tune into Orange. They've got all the information on their Instagram, all their social media. Check out Hero Jr. You can check out me at My Warped Halo. I'll put it in the comments as soon as I'm done here. And yeah, thanks for hanging out and we will see you next week.